This short video is about using open and closed questions to have an effective healthcare consultation. Welcome to Consultations for Health, helping you progress in your communication skills to optimise the care of your patients. The difference between open and closed questions is very important. Even more so is knowing how to use them effectively. An open question allows the respondent to reply openly and add in additional details that are important to them, such as their thoughts and feelings. They are sometimes called divergent questions. They don't focus on the content of the response and they allow the patient, in the case of consultations, to elaborate on what they want to tell you. A closed question is a direct question, normally about a specific topic, and often requires just a one-word response. Closed questions are sometimes known as convergent questions, and they are very specific. It is unlikely that a patient will elaborate on a response. From the last video, we saw how open questions provide much richer detail in the response. That doesn't mean there's no room to use closed questions. Closed questions are essential to clarify specific pieces of information or to probe for further details. Even the word question could be seen as limiting. Often we use open or closed techniques to inquire for further information. Saying to a patient, for example, take me through what's been happening over these last few days is not really a question, but an open question technique. Using open and closed techniques becomes really effective when you know how and when to use them. It's a common misconception that if we use open questions, our patients will talk for too long and take up too much time without giving us the information we need. Where in actual fact, good use of open questions can get you the information you need much faster and more effectively. Therefore, starting with open questions and getting the rich detailed information at the start before moving to closed questions to cover the specific and important information you will need is an effective strategy to getting a history from a patient. It is very easy to move to closed questions too early in a consultation and you risk playing closed question tennis where the patient gets used to providing one word answers to your questions without the rich detail of their thoughts and feelings. Therefore, Try to use open questions to get as much detail as possible before funneling or coning into closed more specific questions. This is called the open to closed cone. And studies have shown it is more effective at getting the whole picture of your patient, enabling you to optimize care more effectively. Here's a short clip of the open and closed cone. So it'd be really helpful to me, just uh, so I can give you the right advice, to know a little bit about your history. So how did you get this prescription? Um, well, this is just the latest in a long line of things for my acne, really. Um, I've just had acne on my face and my back, really, and that's, that's what everything's been treating. Right, so, so you said a long line of things. What have, what have you been using? Uh, so it started with um, benzoyl peroxide gel. I was using that for a while, still using that. Um, and that kind of deals with my face, but doesn't really deal with my back, so... So the benzyl peroxide, how often do you have to use that? Twice a day normally, I think, yeah. And you, are you using that morning and night? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's working? It's doing all right, yeah, on my face, but my back's still okay. horrible. Okay, and happy using that one? Yeah, that's fine. The clip you have just seen shows a short snippet of a consultation where the practitioner starts with open questions and then moves towards closed questions to obtain details or clarify points. So let's think about the benefits of this process. Open questions give you a more complete picture of your patient, allowing them to tell you the whole story. They avoid the practitioner guessing or making assumptions about a patient and potentially taking the wrong direction in their consultation. Allowing the patient to elaborate gives the practitioner time to think and consider what they're being told rather than having to think of continuous questions. Getting the bigger picture for patients with comorbidities or polypharmacy is particularly beneficial as it can be trickier to identify the symptoms or side effects they may be having. Effective use of open questions makes the consultation feel more natural and like a conversation. This will help your patient to feel more comfortable 
and help build rapport to improve the future information and relationship you have with your patient. Moving to closed questions is particularly helpful if a patient goes off topic and can help refocus the consultation. Closed questions help us to gain information that the patient did not feel was relevant or had not thought to tell you. Closed questions are very good at screening for information to help you rule out particular concerns or worries you may have. While the open to close clone is very effective in the vast majority of consultations, there are patient groups where it may not be as effective and it's important to remember that every patient is an individual. Some examples of patients that may require a slightly different approach include children and young adults, patients with mental health problems or dementia, older patients or patients with specific learning needs. So now from this video we have talked through how to use open questions leading into closed questions in a funneling or cone approach. This technique can be very helpful to help you maximise the history and information you get from your patients. Thank you for watching Consultations for Health. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, like our Facebook page and subscribe to these videos. Music